is your role in inspiring John Coltrane to try soprano saxophone? Well, uh, I was sort of the model. Uh, in other words, he heard me play it, and, and he thought um, uh, it was like uh, he was shopping, and uh, I was modeling. <laughs> so he, he heard me with, uh, I was playing with Jimmy Jufri at the five spot. <laughs> came in and he heard me play and uh, he was intrigued by the instrument and he asked me what key it was in and I, when I told him it was B flat he said oh yeah and then uh, a couple of weeks later Don Cherry called me from Chicago He said, listen to this, and he held the telephone up, and I could hear Train playing the soprano. What did you think of what you first heard of his <laughs> Well, I, I had a laugh, really. But, um, wow, wow, wow. I thought, wow, it's nice to have some company. <laughs> You're not saying what you thought of the playing. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, no, I mean, uh, it sounded intriguing to me. I liked it, really. It sounded uh -huh. good. I mean, you know, if Don Cherry uh, calls you up and said, listen to this, it's probably going to be good. Steve Lacey, uh, who else was playing soprano when you started to play in the 50s? Uh, nobody really. It was in complete disuse. Uh, it had gone out of out of a f phase. Like uh, uh, the musicians uh, had considered it. Uh, you know, people played it in the twenties and the thirties, and it went by the forties. I mean, even Johnny Hodges stopped in nineteen forty-two, and it, uh, from that point on, it disappeared because it had a reputation for being out of tune, and uh, arrangers didn't know what to do with it, and it just fell into disuse.